This video will be on how to solve problem 5-3b. It is based on the problem found in your textbook on page 254. Um, there is a, an alternative way that you can solve this problem um, other than what we did in class. Um, an easier way may be to actually calculate the cost of goods sold first and then because we already calculated the cost of goods available for sale and you subtract the ending inventory, this will be the formula, and then all you need to do is solve for the X. So we're going to use this alternative method in this video. So first of all, we have our cost of goods available for sale. We calculated that previously. We just took our beginning inventory, the cost of all those items, plus all of the purchases for the month of May. Add them together, we got 249300 thousand three hundred dollars worth of goods available to sell. Now we are using the perpetual FIFO method for our cost of goods sold. Again, FIFO first in first sold. So our beginning inventory starts off with 150 units at 300 units each. So um, my total cost would be multiply would be to just multiply your units by the cost per unit. Then we have our next purchase, which is May 6th. We purchased 350 units at 350 apiece. So now we have 500 units available to sell. Then May 9th, the date that we make our first sale in May, we sell how many units? Let's see, the problem says 180 units. So we sold 180 of the 500 units. And I'm going to go ahead and put this on the next thing down. So 180 units is what we sold, so we're going to decrease our um, available units by 180. Now the question is, is how much did those 180 units cost us? Was it 300, 350? Well, first in, first sold. So the first items will be sold first. So you'll see that the first date is the beginning inventory. So we'll go ahead and use um, 150 at $300, which gives us a grand total of 45,000, and we need, what, 180? We need 30 more. And we'll put choose the next date of March 6th, those purchases. So we're gonna use the 350 price, multiply it by the 30, we get the 10,500. So the total cost of those 180 um, units that are sold will be 55,500 under the the perpetual FIFO method. And if we take 500 minus the 180, we have available 320 units, and those 320 units would be costed at 350 under the FIFO since the first ones were out the door. Then our next date, we have a purchase on which date? May 17th. And we purchased how many? We purchased 80 units at, let's see, um, 450 each. And then we had another 100 purchased on May 25th. And then from there we go ahead and the price we paid was 458. So now we have 500 units available, 320 at 350, 80 at 450, and 100 available at 458. So our next date is May 30th. We have a sale. And the amount of how many units? Let's see, it says 300 units. So we're going to decrease our inventory by 300. And again, I keep forgetting to move the spaces. So let's see, May 30th, sales. So if we have 500 available, we sell 300. We now have 200 available after this transaction. Now again, first in, first sold. So when we look at what we have available up here, 
um, we'll notice that the first state is 350 and for 320 units well we have enough so let's go ahead and do 300 units at the 350 price and we come out to 105 for the cost of goods sold on the May 30th now um, an easy way is just to add these two together our total cost of goods sold ends up being 16500 so if we use our formula our cost of goods available for sale minus the 160 I'm sorry equals the cost of goods sold which is 16500 so the, the 2493 so the 249300 minus the x in the inventory is unknown equals the cost of goods sold of 16500 so if we just take the difference between those two solving for the unknown the x we can back into our ending inventory so the answer for the first part under FIFO would be 88,800 um, ending inventory alright any questions please um, post under um, Google Hangouts the next one is LIFO now for LIFO it's last in first sold so we're going to start off with the same information beginning units 150 at 300 um, dollars a piece then we have a May 6 purchase of 350 units at $350 a piece and we have available 500 then we'll do our sell on May 9th and we will sell how many units 180 units now because we're doing last in first sold the last date, the latest date would be the 350 price. So we're going to do 180 times 350. And the cost of goods sold would be the 63,000 for that first date. Now, what we have available is 500, but of those 500, um, since we only um, sold 180 of the 350, we have two different prices. So we actually have available 170. Let's see, 170. Let me go ahead and figure out the exact amount. So what we have available for sale after this transaction would be 320 units. And those 320 units would be divvied up between 150 at $300 and 170 at 350 that's what we would have available then we make our two purchases on the 17th of May we purchase 80 at the 450 price and then May 25th we purchase how many more for the problem it says 100 at the 458 price so if you add these all together we have 500 units at very four different prices and then on May 30th we make another sell and the sales on this date is 300 units and because it's 300 units last and first sold we'll go with the last date which was hundred at the 458 price then our next last date would be the 80 at the 450 price and then we'll have 170 um, which would be that's too many it should be 120 because we don't want to go over the what the 300 this has to equal the 300 so 180 and 120 um, that 120 would come from that next last layer which is 350 And when you add them up, you should get 123.8. And again, for our formula, we'll have 249 minus X and our new cost of goods sold, 186. 800. 
So we'll solve for um, x, our unknown, which is our in an inventory under LIFO. And we shall get 62,500 for our ending inventory. And then what we'll have available for sale will be the 150 units at the 300 and then 50 of those 170 units at the 350. Okay? And then the weighted average method, um, this one, all we got to do is figure out a weighted average after each one of the cells. To do that, we'll first start off with our beginning inventory and then we'll add our next purchase which is May 6th and we purchase how many units? Let's see it says 350 at $350 each. So our grand total we add up the beginning plus our first purchase is 167,500 and we have 500 units available for sale. For the weighted average we're just going to take the total cost and divide it by the units we have available and we get a weighted average of three hundred thirty five um, dollars. Then on May 9th we go and we make a sale and we sell how many units? We sell 180 units so 180 of the 500 and the price that we're going to use is the 335 multiply that out our cost of goods sold is 60,300 and then what we have left over is the 320 at the 335 price then on May 17th we make some additional purchases um, one for 80 units at 450 and then on May 25th we make another purchase for what was it 100 units at 458 so now this is what we have available for sale the 335 weighted price the 450 actual price 458 actual price figure out the total total cost of inventory on this date is 189,000 so we'll take the 189,000 divide by 500 and our new weighted average price is now 378 then on May on May 30th when we have a sell we sell what 300 units we're going to be 300 units at that 378 price this will be the cost of goods sold. We'll add both of those together to get our total. And again, we'll use that formula. 249,300 is available for sale minus the unknown ending inventory equals 173.7. Solve for X. And X ends up being 75,600 in an inventory for the weighted average perpetual method. That concludes this video. Any questions, please um, ask in Google Hangout.